Singapore researchers have helped to chart one of the most underexplored regions of the Indian Ocean. About 8,000 square kilometres of seafloor was successfully mapped during an undersea mission. About 70% of the seafloor is new to science, with rare sharks and deep-sea corals discovered in what has been touted as a new era of regional collaboration. The Monsoon Rise expedition, led by US non-profit Ocean X and the National University of Singapore, found thriving ecosystems in the region, working at depths of up to 5,000 metres. Scientists from Singapore, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand and Fiji used state-of-the-art technology to better understand life deep in the ocean. More on that, we're joined by the Deputy Chief Scientist of the mission, or he's Dr. Jose Christopher Escano Mendoza. Thanks for joining us this evening, Dr. Mendoza. Good evening. And you were on this mission and you just got back two days ago. Yes. What did you find? Yes, so it has been an interesting uh, three weeks for us. Uh, we were out in the eastern Indian Ocean uh, targeting a group of seamounts. And uh, we specifically targeted two seamounts among the several there uh, because of their interesting features. So now please take note that seamounts are what we can call underwater mountains. Okay, But the, the, the seamounts that we studied, the summits did not break the surface of the water. So one of the seamounts... Uh, we, through detailed mapping, we were able to discover that it was about 1,020 meters below the surface, and the other seamount was about 1,600 uh, meters below. Uh, yeah. So, seamount is a very large mountain, essentially under the sea. Yes. So, I take it there's a lot more difficult to explore and map than, say, a completely flat area. Uh, definitely, because um, the seamount uh, is, um, uh, let's say, it's a, it's a more uh, rugged feature uh, on the seafloor. And if you look at these particular seamounts, I, I mentioned that uh, their, their summits were uh, a thousand meters at least uh, down. The bases were even deeper at about 4,000 or more. Yeah. So what did you find? Yeah, so it was interesting because I think one of the main outputs of this study was a detailed map of the seamounts and the intervening area between these two. Uh, this, this, this place has not been uh, surveyed in great detail before. And of course, there were a lot of interesting uh, animals. And in fact, uh, we are looking forward to studying uh, the videos, uh, tons of videos that we took through the remotely operated vehicle and through our landers, as well as the specimens that we have brought back to Singapore. And uh, from there, we will create a nice and concise picture about uh, the biodiversity in that uh, area. The more we know about what at this point we do not know, the better we will be able to conserve in advance of possibly losing these valuable habitats. Uh, given as I mentioned before we spoke to you, so much of the ocean floor is not explored. Missions like yours have enormous value. Yes, they do. Uh, in fact, um, it's been often said that we know more about the surface of the moon than the bottom of the sea here in our own planet. Uh, we have only mapped in great detail about 26% of the sea floor. Uh, so there's still a lot that needs to be studied. Uh, and uh, you're right, uh, why we go here to look at the life and study uh, the organisms that are in the seafloor, right, is to get a better idea of what the biodiversity is there, what the components of that deep sea ecosystem is, uh, to help us better understand uh, the deep sea ecosystem. And this is because the deep sea ecosystem is very vital to the survival of our planet, of human beings, because it's um, quite essential to um, the regulation of our uh, planetary climate, for example, or uh, it's quite crucial to uh, biogeochemical cycles that are important for sustaining life on the planet. I take it this would not be your first mission on 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 on. on on a ship like that or a mission like this is not, is it? Well, I, I have been on some uh, deep sea expeditions before, um, but the main difference with this particular mission was that the ship was really state of the art and it was crewed by um, scientists as well as oceanographers and educators who are like-minded like us. 
and we had a lot of, um, I would say, high-tech uh, equipment. Uh, mainly, uh, we had uh, good acoustic equipment on the ship, which allowed us to map the seafloor in great detail. And the other, and my favorite one, is the remotely uh, operated uh, vehicle, which, or ROV. And this ROV is amazing because it has a lot of um, cameras around it that can focus on different parts of the seafloor. We can use it to survey the seafloor. It has a lot of um, arms and nice little gadgets on it that can uh, help us measure um, parameters as well as help us collect specimens. So we use the ROV a lot because um, it was able to go down to the very deepest parts of that survey area. And there was a part where we went down as deep as 5,000 meters. Yeah. Uh, and I asked you why this is, this is not your first mission. All these things, so it's a, a tradition of research, building on shared expertise. You can have new technology, but if you do not share it, if you do not build on it, it ends there. So what's the next step, given what you have found on this mission? What's next? for your team and be on your team as well. Right. Um, I think one of the important things that we were able to show uh, in this mission is that it is possible to collaborate. And in the spirit of the High Seas Treaty, right, uh, this, this mission uh, is meant to collect information that is meant to be shared with the rest of the world. So uh, there'll be a lot of study uh, still involved. We have uh, months and probably years of study ahead of us. And we'll be very happy to share uh, this information through the proper channels, through scientific journals, and uh, by sharing it to the uh, international uh, authorities. Well, thanks for coming in to share that with us this evening. Uh, anyone who's interested can go further and find this online as well. Thanks so much, uh, Dr. Jose Christopher Escano Mendoza from the NUS Lee Kong Chen Natural History Museum. Thanks for coming us this evening. Thank you. Yeah.